Welcome back to the CNT Podcast. My name is Tommy Terrio. I'm here with Justin Yormark and Nico Giaratano. Uh, Giaratano or Tanyo? Uh, Giaratano. Giaratano, okay. Or I'm going to get it at some point. Not today. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah, no we really do. So we're going to get right into it. Nico, you was a former minor league player and just signed on to be a coach for the Seattle Manors. So leading that leads into the tw- first question is, what level will you be coaching? Uh, great. So I think I'll be in Arizona um, for this first season, uh, which I'm really excited about. Uh, so we'll be in Peoria at the uh, spring training complex, uh, working with, you know, some of the younger guys and prospects, and I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, just base level stuff before building your way up in the organization. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm just, just excited that, you know, I have the opportunity. Yeah. So as we'll get into later in the podcast as well, you are a former player, um, Giants and athletics, right? Yeah. I I was signed by the Giants, uh, drafted by the Giants in 2017, um, released by them in 2019. And um, the A's picked me up as a free agent in 2019. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, how does that influence like who you are as a coach? Like how, like how you teach your, how you teach the players that you help develop. Definitely. You know, I, I've always known that I've wanted to coach. Um, my dad, uh, he's been the coach at university of San Francisco for um, 26 years. Um, so, you know, I've always had that experience and that thought in the back of my mind. Um, so as I've gone throughout college in my life, you know, I've always just tried to pay attention to things that I've liked and things that have worked for me. Um, same when I got to the minor leagues, you know, play for different managers, different coaches, uh, you kind of just pick and choose what works for you and what you want to pass on. And, and then, you know, now that I'm switching gears to a coach, um, I have that kind of information gathered um, and I'm still doing my homework every day, uh, videos and all of that and trying to figure out, you know, what really works for players. So as you've been saying is you've grown up being around a coach in your life. So yeah. being around that um, at a young age, what do you think is the, what will you be focusing on with developing the man as young players? Yeah. You know, I think um, understanding that development takes time, Um, you know, just being patient, just like with your podcast, you know, you figure stuff out as you go. Um, It's going to be different now than it was when you first started. Um, So just focusing on taking it one day at a time um, and, you know, getting better each, each and every single day. Yeah, because you're not just going straight to the majors. Like, that's just nobody's career progression is going to be like that. Just have the patience to. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, you know, um, a lot of kids sign young um, and they go straight to Arizona. So there's some 16, 17, 18 year olds um, that are really going to have to take time and develop. Um, but, you know, they have a ton of talent, ton of skill. And, you know, they just need that experience. Yep. They just need, you, 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 have, you have to wait. You'll get your, you'll get your chance in the sun. Yeah, the big thing about baseball is uh, it doesn't happen overnight. It's definitely something that you have to, takes time and you have to be patient with. Absolutely, yeah, great point of view. So, we got the Giants, we got the Athletics, the Mariners organization. Like, well, like, talk to me about that. That's just like doesn't seem to have that much correlation. No, yeah, not a lot of correlation. Um, but you know, I have a few connections. Um, and the Mariners have been really great to me. You know, through the hiring process. Um, I'm not sure. If you guys know the name Andy McKay, he was just promoted to the um, big leagues this year. He's kind of a, you know, mental performance coach. He's one of the best in the business. Um, So I got connected with him, went through a few interviews. um, And, you know, here I am today. And I'm I'm thankful for that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So being now being hired to be a coach, being this being your first year coaching, what do you think is the most important thing to focus on for a young player's game to develop? Good question. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it that I want um, players to focus on. And I think in, from my point of view, just understanding that you got to put in the work, you know, to see the results um, and the seasons, you know, they're pretty grueling. They're pretty long. Um, so understanding that it's a process and, you know, I just want players to understand that, you know, hard work really does pay off over time. Yeah. You just have to slowly build. Yeah. Slowly build it up. Yeah. Just, it's a process. So 
let's let's take a step back. We already kind of talked about this. Uh, like your dad's a coach. I mean, I have to assume that does a lot for it. But like for you personally, like your love of baseball, like like what's your personal story with the game of baseball growing up? I, I mean, playing in high school and then yeah. at the minor league level. Like mm-hmm. talk me through that. So I've always played, you know, I was a player my entire life. I'm 27 now. So for 26 years, I've always been a player. Um, but what I really focused on was, um, you know, just loving the game just in, in the, in the entirety of it. You know, I, I didn't get so caught up in, in just playing, you know, cause I always kind of knew that when my playing days were over, I had this, you know, to turn to, and I want to be able to give back. Uh, so I grew up, I'm from San Francisco, um, played my whole life, played in high school, went to university of San Francisco, um, graduated, drafted by the San Francisco Giants, you know, so I've always been a Bay Area guy. Um, but, you know, like I said, it just the love for the game, you know, it's still growing. Um, and it's just been a part of me my whole life. So I'm, I'm very thankful to have the opportunity to give back to players now. So as you've been saying, you grew up with baseball, but what was the moment that you truly fell in love with the game of baseball? You know, I think it was really when I was a young kid, um, being able to watch, you know, my dad coach and, USF players play and being able to um, joke around with them in the dugout. Uh, you know, I was a bat boy for a long time, and I think that's where my love developed. Uh, you know, just being able to hang out, uh, play catch, take around balls, all the small things. Yeah, just slowly. Just, I mean, I mean, that feels like the, like the whole journey is just slowly just building up with whether it's your career, or just your love for baseball. It's interesting. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So. We've talked a lot, you know, the Mariners organization is, I mean, it's gained just a good reputation over the past year, year and a half, two years of like having a lot of talent at all levels. Mm-hmm. Um, are there any like young players that you're specifically looking forward to working with or players that you might've worked with in the past that you really liked working with? Yeah, I think our international signs, um, we just signed three or four kids on the first day of international signing. Uh, very excited to see them work and, you know, see their skill sets. I also had a unique uh, opportunity. Um, I was old at this point. I was in single A, um, but I got to play against Julio Rodriguez and uh, Kellenick when they were in West Virginia. Um, so I played against them. It's going to be pretty cool to see them again. Uh, but like I said, you know, I was old and I was on my way out. They were on their way up. Um, so it's pretty funny. Pretty cool. I'm actually, I'm a huge Kellenick fan. Um, I have the believe sign that he signed at the last game last year. Oh, he signed that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's probably hard to see, but yeah, that um, was that was an exciting time for for the mm-hmm. Mariners um, that postseason run. That was awesome. Yeah. Kellen's a great guy. So, following in with that, who are what do you think is the best aspect of his game, and what do you think will make him succeed from a coaching point of view? Another great question. Um, you know, I think he's got a complete tool set. Um, he can hit, he can run, he can really play defense, he can throw. Um, but then again, you know, he's, he's really young, so it's going to take time. Um, but I think he's on his way. Uh, very excited to see him and, you know, see him succeed in the big leagues. So you run your own player development um, camp that, like, you specifically work with players on. Um, like, do you plan to continue that? And if so, like, how do you want to balance both that and then working with the Marin, like the players in the Mariners organization? Definitely. You know, I started that um, recently before I had the job. Um, and, you know, one of the unique things about baseball is it's a six to seven month, you know, job. So I'll be gone and I'll be coaching with the Mariners for six, seven months, um, some camps over the off season. And when I'm home, um, I'll be back in Florida And I hope to continue that, you know, help younger kids Um, when I'm not with the Mariners and I'm home, help young kids do some lessons. um, And, you know, so, yeah, I do plan on continuing that in the offseason. That's awesome. I always I always like it when I see former and sometimes current players start a side business to help train younger athletes who aren't in the majors or minors yet and who are trying to get there. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm really I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. So I guess just, I mean, a question that I have written down, but just something that I just was personally curious about. So you're what, you said 27 now? 27, yes. 
what i mean obviously you haven't really joined the organization yet there's still a lockout and everything else like there's still a lot going on before you're truly going to join like join the team yeah but like yeah. is that weird at all like a lot of the play like some of the players you'll see at spring training are going to be older than you it's like is that like a thought that goes yeah. through your mind at all yeah definitely you know i think it's something that i have to learn how to navigate through um you know it's such a wide age age group of players such a wide age group of um coaches I think the the hitting coach in in the major leagues, Jared DeHart, is is my age as well, um, and that's even a bigger age gap for him to deal with on a higher on a higher scale. Um, but I think you know just being able to watch how people like you know he people like him and and how he goes about it, I'll be able to navigate my own way through. Great question. Well, uh, yeah, um, I also have another question that I didn't have written down was from a coaching from a coach's aspect, like from a coach's point of view, realistically, do you think with the manners prospects they have and the young team they have, do you think they could win a World Series within the next five to seven years? Oh, 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, full belief in that. Um, you know, the the players within the organization are, are fully capable of that. And, and you know, the, the coaches on the other side in the front office, you know, they've been working hard and, you know, they're really on their way. And, I, and I'm glad to be able to be a part of that now. Um, but a lot of work has been put in by them, you know, to reach that goal. And I, I really think it's, you know, going to become a reality really soon. Mm -hmm. You're the confidence. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh, you, you want to go? I, to to kind of add on to you saying this, um, a while ago, I made an Instagram post for the podcast saying, a hot take saying that they would make a world's win it by 2025. And, I, I'll be honest, a few people messaged me seeing that not believing because it was, I think, a year before last year. I think it was, um, okay. I think it was before 2020. And right. so the season started in 2020. And so people thought that I was a little crazy for thinking that one of the worst teams in the league could do yeah, that. Yeah. But I've been, that's when I really got into looking at prospects and stuff and not only looking at major league baseball, but also minor league baseball and mm -hmm. saw that they had a phenomenal. Uh, prospects yeah phenomenal yeah but and then again you know if, if you believe that then that's all that really matters um, I, I believe it with you uh, there's always going to be doubters right no matter what you mm -hmm. post no matter what you say um, but 100 percent, you know there's a lot of talent and a lot of good people working for the Mariners believe what you say and continue to work for it really definitely yeah so my last question for you um so like we talked about, you're, like you're young, but like you're still gonna be able to, I mean, you might be able to relate to some players more than, you know, like a 60 year old who's been doing this for 40 years might. Like, how do you want, like, how do you plan to build chemistry and, and rapport with um, some of the players that you'll be, some of the players that you'll be working with? Like, what's your plan to like build yeah, that with them? The main focus of the, of the Mariners as I've, you know, began learning about through the hiring process and onboarding, um, is that we really care about the players more as people than we do as players. Um, you know, so just building that relationship that, you know, I really care about you as a person. Um, we care about your well-being. Um, we care about your mental state. Uh, we care about your health. And obviously we care about baseball as well, but, you know, I just want to, when I get there, I want to be able to build those relationships and let them know that I'm there for them. Um, and, I, and I wish them the best on and off the field. That's awesome. Uh Thank you so much for coming on. Um, I had a great time. Uh, I'm sure yeah. Tommy did too. Yeah, you know what? I had a I had a fantastic time too. Um, I'm very impressed by you too. Um, really cool to see that you started this, and um, it looks like you guys got a really cool thing. Um, keep just keep working hard at it. We appreciate it. Thank you. But yeah, thanks for sharing some like inner secrets with player development, and everything else. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank no. Problem. Yeah. Always. Anybody else? Oh, anybody else who's a young athlete, um, hit them up on Instagram. Where can they find you on social medias? Yeah, so it's just Jeritano Ger Player Development. Um, last name's pretty long, um, so if you can, you know, maybe just spell it out. But uh, just social social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Jeritano uh, Player Development. For sure. Sweet. I yeah. always love interviewing players and stuff, but I really always have a different type of appreciation for interviewing coaches and scouts because you get to see a whole nother perspective of baseball absolutely thank you guys i appreciate it mm -hmm. thanks for coming on we really appreciated it